Mr. Sharma, apart from being an entrepreneur, is also an author. Uh, last year, he wrote a book called How to Thrive in a Family Business, uh, which is based on his own journey, and uh, he's given very practical suggestions. So if you may want to read the book, it's published by Penguin Random House. I had the uh, pleasure of reading it uh, uh, around the time of the launch. He sent me an advanced copy. Uh, so let me, um, you know, you say you saved the best for the last. We've heard that song too. Uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, first of all, let me start by asking you, what has changed in the business environment in the last 28 months? We'll come to marketing, we'll come to the role of health, immunity. Uh, how's that plank becoming? And how is the well-being and the health um, industry growing? But before that, what has changed in the business in the last 27 months? Specific to my industry or would Overall, you, uh, you can do both. You can talk macro and then you can talk uh, specific to the domain you're in. I think uh, we, we all will agree out here that technology has taken like center stage. In industries where it was not so prevalent, it has actually taken center stage. And I think so that is the biggest takeaway what this pandemic has shown for the entire business world. Besides that, definitely uh, there has been a huge awareness which we see on health and wellness. So, and that's how it, it brings us on center stage and, and the center of the mind of most of the consumers that it is highly important to succeed, to stay happy, is to stay healthy. So I guess that is one of the biggest takeaways. That Absolutely. So tell me now, um, this industry is growing. Uh, every brand wants to take the health plank. Uh, in every communication, you see the benefits to immunity. Give us a sense of uh, what is coming in the near future that we have not seen in a big way? We know that you know everyone's talking about health, immunity, personal care is very important, sleep is very important, uh, quitting smoking and drinking is very very important. I know I'm saying this just before the cocktails, but you know well, there's no point eating almonds in the morning or having badena chavan prash and then drinking uh, half a bottle of single malt in the night. It doesn't work, right? Uh, so what are the trends that are coming in the future? that are very small right now, but will become bigger and bigger as we. So Anurag, like I just said that uh, the healthcare industry and specifically the natural, which I, I boil down to the Ayurveda, that has uh, taken the center stage. See, immunity was always talked about by Bedanath because we, we believed in the basic principles of Ayurveda. And the basic principle of Ayurveda is first and foremost prevention. So if you have, we all. I wish I met you 30 years back. I wouldn't have <laughs> lost my. Uh, I so would have believed <coughs> in prevention and cure. So Bernath has always been talking about this 360 degree immunity building within. And obviously, out of the entire basket of products which we have, the lead product definitely is Bernath Chavanprash. Of course. And we have two variants out there. You know, one is called Bernath Chavanprash Avle, and one, the other is called the Bernath Chavanprash Special. And the differentiator being that one is for immunity and one is for enhanced or superhumanity. I like it, immunity. So Bedna Chavanprash special, the kind of uh, trajectory which we saw in these two uh, like years has actually been mind-boggling. The awareness what has come in consumers, the young consumer, or I would say across even the, uh, the rural and the urban. So this is here to stay. People have understood that if you have a strong immunity, and especially I'm talking about a 360 degree immunity. See, one can build an immunity against a particular ailment by taking a vaccination for that. Here we are talking about keeping a healthy body. And that is what is going to be the core, the customer like preference, what we are talking about. And that is what is translating into this lifestyle wellness. So clearly prevention is better than cure. Definitely. Uh, people are not looking just to prevent uh, diseases, but enhance the quality of their life by enhancing their health. Uh, so first, prevention is better than cure. Second is enhancement uh, through the right nutrition. And third, which you alluded to is, uh, you know, because we did a session on data. 
today we wear a fitbit we know what is our heart beat uh, how many uh, steps i walk uh, you know how much have i slept how much of it was deep sleep uh, so clearly data is helping us in ways that it data never helped. should help us i th i but i think so the last speaker also spoke about it that don't get bogged down by data it's don't get bogged down by the numbers the data should help us i always uh, encourage uh, the younger generation to understand the intelligence data intelligence insights you know, that's the highly important and that's what the speaker was speaking and and hats off to him what he was like saying yeah please come. okay so let me ask you are you likely to launch more products uh, because you know i was in shillong yesterday and i've heard about the turmeric from lamp lamp i may not pronounce it rightly langadong something like that i bought it and it was much more expensive than normal turmeric then i bought uh, you know black pepper right and then i bought some uh, other you know such natural things and i paid almost three times than than i normally pay for that so clearly uh, consumers are willing to pay more because the turmeric from there is supposed to be the best quality of turmeric it has much better curcumin than the normal turmeric and maybe aap jaisa dikhna chahta tha to maine kaha finally to turmeric lagani chahiye to maine socha main le aaun but on a serious note uh, the consumers are willing to pay more for products so do you have plans to launch more i, I also bought a kada you know i bought a ready made kada uh, you know it's like package you just it's like powder and you and put, put and you drink i bought some tea bags which were kala tea bags right. uh so clearly i saw new product variants there come up right. and uh, i you know i have this problem of talking to people at the store and asking them kya bikta hai what sells what is not selling why you know which is the best selling product all that i while i'm buying so clearly the point again and again i'm trying to mention is that consumers are willing to pay more for differentiated products and a brand like yours which has been trusted over the years built over the years is a durable brand is the pride of india uh, i do you have plans to launch new product variants enter new segments uh, i'd like to know from you yeah definitely so we at bednath are quite uh, <coughs> gungo with the future what is evolving since the consumer base has become large when i say large it also means that uh, the new people who are in they also have the money to spend so definitely and most of the older brands have been mass brands so there is definitely a stage which we have already evolved to is the luxury segment in ayurveda in natural products and and as you can see in the luxury segment one can get whole whole kind of organic you know uh, gi uh, specific products then you will have definitely we are going to evolve into the mastige like segment and subsequently the the whole cycle of evolution is going to take place we are going to have brands which will be dedicated to ingredients or brands which are dedicated to you know particular segment or a category like skin care or hair care so and definitely i must tell you i must tell you every week because of my role both at exchange for media and business world i am not exaggerating i am under at least one new organic uh, skin care brand is being launched at least one at least the last 3 months i can say i have come across four or five new because they send me press releases they want me to meet the founder so i mean just in the skin care right. and beauty domain every now and then there is a new brand being launched which is also part of well being right, right. so clearly i am just supporting what you are saying no so definitely like i said at bednath we have uh, a huge plan here so we, uh, we we understand the limitations of of the umbrella brand and uh, we are looking at all the segments now it is it is a question of timing and what first so you have, you have already seen two brands into into the market and you, and you are going to see some more segments also being covered through the company through the umbrella brand under the umbrella brand which are going to address the need of the young customer and that was my going to be nice you know bedanath i have grown up on uh, your flagship product uh, but the young new millennials i'm sure they must have seen it then their kitchen the parents using it but 
uh, what are you going to do to reinvent your brand for the uh, millennial? So you already addressed that in some way. But yeah, Anurag, I mean, you can already see, first and foremost, one, one will see, uh, you know, a presentation in a different format. The form is going to change. Mm. It's not going to be in a children form. Mm. You know, it's, n it's not going to be a kara form. And like you said, it would be a T. So developing that, you see, it's, it's very simple to say that, oh, kara is T. Because T, but you see, the boiling point of each herb is different. Where, see, this is a technical, it is a highly sensitive industry. It's very easy for somebody to come, oh, there's a demand, so let's go, you know, get the data, or oh, everybody is asking for this. But now if you have three herbs in a tea bag, and the boiling point for all three is different, and while the one has, has boiled earlier, by the time the third one is giving out the benefits, the first one is already giving, getting a say, rancid. So it's, a, you know, there's a lot of R&D which has to go through it. And we have managed it by now. You know, in these three years, it has been there. And they're all, all hitting the market space now. So okay. I, I would always say that don't just fall for it. I, I know everybody's eager. There is a need to improve. There is a need to stay healthy. The importance of, like, well-being, the importance of grooming well, See, these are the things of the future, of, of today, in fact. Like, future would, would bring in something else, probably, you know. So, but don't get... Uh, Do you have any product in development which can grow hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> the most uh, critical no, 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 thing. It's okay. I don't miss my... It's okay. Shaves shampoo yeah. money. Shaves a lot of time. So no, I but uh, see, there is a lot in, in hair care, too. Like we always say, that you have to start at the prevention level. Absolutely. I mean, after you lose hair and then you come, then you'll only be ending up in a clinic, you know, where they'll be uh, yeah, pl like planting it. <coughs> Good. Now, my last two questions before I bring in. One is about, I was talking to the speaker before, Salil, and we talked about the rise of D2C brands, digital to consumer, direct to consumer. And he said, you know, omni-channel is the way. When you launch your new brands, of course, you, are, you have a large traditional retail reach. How do you see your media mix and distribution mix to be as you launch a new brand? So currently, what, what we are grappling with is all the digital space which is available. And everybody is doing it. Most of the traditional brands or, or the old houses, because I keep speaking to everybody, you know. Just last night, I was speaking to the owner of, say, Liberty Shoes. I was talking to him. How? Adesh. 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 And yes. uh, so we were just discussing. We, we we discuss all the time. So it is it is a new space. Interesting part is that it is growing extremely fast. When we look at at the data of what older brands, how they are performing in a country like US or the UK we are actually moving a lot faster than that. And for established GT brands. So definitely it's going to be, and things are changing too fast, and then the entire thing that capturing the sentiment of the consumer, his, you know, the feel, because we are used to, you know, that the person has to go and pick up the product, try it, but on a screen, how is he addressing that? So it is probably the, the, the photography, the, the matter available on it, experiences of consumers. So it is, it is a huge field, and it is actually new for us. You know, just but, in the uh, but we are shoe, moving fast in the on shoe that. space, the new brands like Neiman's, which have come from nowhere oh, and yeah. kind of oh, they built a right? huge business, forget the brand, yeah. right? I can give you at least in the shoe space. So clearly... Uh, you know, the digital space is creating new businesses, new Definitely. brands, Definitely. and they have very little physical retail presence. Uh, in some cases, zero retail presence, you know. Uh, so my last also a challenge of, of, of balancing uh, the online and the offline, you know, for Absolutely. us. There's, there's also a challenge. So there can't be heavy discounting. Absolutely. Which, which is one of the norms. I would not say the only norm, but uh, one of the norms. So definitely, it's a, 
it's an interesting area and definitely we'll be able to come through with that. Okay, my last question before I get two, three questions from the audience. Uh, he's promised a full year of uh, Bedenath Chavanprash for the best question. So if you want that uh, before definitely. your beer, uh, we'll be happy to give it to you. But on a serious note, uh, I read your book on how to thrive in a family business. You shared very practical advice from your own experiences and your own journey on what to do to be able to thrive and make the family business, uh, you know, bring longevity to it, bring vitality to it. Uh, so why don't you in a very brief way share with us what you wrote in the book? So actually, uh, this is a culmination of my own experience through a family which is in business for more than 100 years now. And I'm, th I'm the third generation. So I, I did go through all the experiences. Plus then I, I did a course uh, from, from the SP Jain Institute in Mumbai. And that opened up my, my vision towards this family business and, and the challenges of the family business. S then when I actually got serious in, in sharing my uh, experiences, I went down and did a research of 250 odd family businesses, small to big. The culmination of all this data is what my book is. And the core thing, the, the basis of the book is what not to do. Mm. See, it's very easy to preach, air kar, air kar, air kar, you know. But what to say is what not to do. So I definitely say the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. So I have listed out 30 sins of a family business. They are precisely 30 sins. If you can avoid those sins, you can guarantee the longevity of your business beyond the third generation. As we all know, that 82% of family businesses globally do not cross the third generation. So the whole idea was how I can bring down this 82% to 75%. why don't you give one, of those, one or two of those? Uh, uh, so, uh, so Anurag, I mean, we, we had a long chat on this. The sin number one is one of my favorite also, is the elder son syndrome. Now, in most of the family businesses, it is a no-brainer ki ye bada ho gaya and so you make him the head of the business. We don't see the competence. We don't see, you know, where he's educated. Would he be able to run if, if the, if, if the fit is right? The, is he interested, is he in, interested the, in the business in or no? The business. <clears throat> and, and more importantly, you know, what I saw that the Bauji or the Lalaji, <clears throat> they all are coming from the background of agriculture. Now, agriculture is all about like muscle and strength. It's not about the brain per, per se. So the, if the elder has grown up first, so you just put him in the, in the fields and he's going to take care of the family till the others come up. But business is not about muscle. It's about intelligence. It's about sharpness. So I guess that is the sin number one, which we in India and also in the larger part of Asia suffer. It's not there now in the West. But in India, we still suffer from the elder son syndrome. Uh, yeah. I, am, I am the second child in my family. Uh, not that my father did any business, so it's safe. Uh, I have an older sister, but uh, uh, as I said, uh, this is my last question. Uh, I would like to request for two questions from the audience. If there are any questions, uh, Please raise your hand. You have Mr. Sharma. Again, Kamna wants to ask a question. Uh, Kamna, go ahead. Can we get a mic? Hi. Uh, uh, Mr. Hi, Sharma, in your, in your conversation, sir, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, when you're building these brands and when you're going to build this for the younger generation, just, you know, maybe an idea or maybe a question. Uh, like we have a company called The Better India, which built a brand called The Better Home, and that was only about the community. Uh, now, in you know, in your case, you have a, you have all the young millennials who are very much, you know, now we are very much bothered about how we look, how we, you know, how we are doing uh, in terms of health and well-being. Uh, do you have any plans or anything in your mind in building a community, and then going forward, you know, building. Uh, 
within that community, you know, actually promoting your products as well. So I see, I understand your sentiment. So at this point of time, uh, that's not as per our plan because like we said that at the top, we don't think that we will be able to actually influence or guide or ask people to change their way or style. Our core job would be to help you get uh, relief from whatever ailment or issues you are facing. So I guess initially we are going to be product centric. But will, it, okay. will that be, you know, you can drive conversations instead of leading those conversations, you can maybe be a platform to have those conversations. That will be like stage two for sure. Like, and I'm, I'm just taking back home today from, from the last like presentation about the app and how they are going to, you know, the warranty and you get back. So definitely there's, there's something to learn. There's always something to learn in every year. Thank you, Kamran. Yeah. There we are, Mr. Gupta, and we are the gentleman here. Can we pass the mic? We'll take two questions and we'll wrap up. First, this gentleman, and we're coming to you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sharma. So, I my question is on the family business side. I currently work with a family business, which I won't name here. But uh, the question is that. Are you the elder son? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> it's always <competition>. So, so. <laughs> My question is, as, as the generations progress and the need for money is not much, the focus moves from growing business to more of creating legacy. How do you continue, the business continue to move forward? Uh, and, you know, especially with the, the managerial staff looking for opportunities, but uh, the growth ambition at the top level not really being there. So how, how to continue mm. moving forward? I hope this is not about your, I know, no. you told me that you were. <laughs> By the way, they not necessarily, he's not the eldest son, right? No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, yes. So good. I mean, uh, that's that's. I don't want to tell you where he works, okay? <laughs> but he does work for a promoter who comes from a family business. Okay. Though the business he started is not a family business. So one of the sins also, what I have to like mentioned in my book is that it is a dying need to professionalize the business definitely by the third generation. If you can do it in the first or the second, it's brilliant. So I guess the challenges of how uh, the family, the promoter family is going to behave <coughs> when they are older and they don't have this zest or the zeal to, to grow the business, that gets over, you see. Because the moment you keep hiring newer people to be able to take the brand to another level or the business to another level, I guess then you have, you have answered the question yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, last question. Uh, hi, Ajay ji. It's a pleasure talking to you, seeing hi. you here. And, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Badnath as a brand, not as much as a consumer, but being a marketing professional, you know, I've loved this brand. I have a question regarding how do you guys, because you have, facilities in Jhansi, Nagpur, Naini, and all these places, when there is a new product la launch plan at some place, how it is being adopted with the entire, uh, you know, various locations. And Ayurveda, as I have understood over the years, because I've been visiting some of the companies in Gujarat, and Gujarat was, uh, is supposed to be the oldest Ayurveda manufacturing, or rather the formulations that are prepared there. How do you guys, manage to you know maintain the same formula and is it a so i as i look at it as an outsider it's a big strength to you know have these uh, logistically managed very well but uh, what is inside the family that runs that the same product being imbibed by the other unit also and so on you so have, forth you have hit the nail on the head actually uh, thank you. good so you see uh, ayurveda or any any of the natural products you are based on ingredients which do not grow in all the regions all the time of the year. There is a timing. And at Bednath, years back, we have identified the GI, the, where the ingredient is the best, which means that you get the best nutrition out of it or whichever molecule you have identified is the highest in that region. So most of these plants, like you took the name of Neni, which is like Allahabad and now Priyagraj, as you know. So that is actually the heartland for Avla. It's the heartland for Avla. Now, we went all the way there just for, because all the Avla products need to be there. Because you're going to get the best Avla at the shortest period of time 
I mean, th there was a, t a, a time frame, I think so, in the 80s, when we used to advertise paid se pack mein 24 ghante mein. That was the kind of, you know, the logistics which was there. But now the quantities have gone up and it's physically not possible to do that. So most of these factories and plants, we, we have approximately about 13 plants across the countryside. And uh, so wherever the fresh ingredient is critical, the plant gets located there for that. I hope it answers. By the way, one of the biggest fads is, f you know, farm to fork. I mean, there is, I'm going to Bangalore next month and I'm going to a restaurant which somebody has recommended, which is like really, they charge 6,000 bucks, you have to pay in advance. It's only everything fresh. Yeah, you have to pay 6,000 rupees in yes. advance. Yeah. to be able to that concept so I'm going to borrow that fast. from you okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm there. so that was a luxury brand at that time right. but now you become mass because of your your turnovers so there's one more question <laughs> from the gentleman no, Ajayji this last connected question that ministry of uh, I mean Ayush you'll have to pay for the second person who was with me also yeah, yes, okay, I'll, do that, I'll do that so the Ayush take his parallels the Yunani as well as the Ayurveda what is your take on that Yunani versus Ayurveda no I'm just it's not versus I'm saying that what is the overall thought process with the government that they created Ayush and where Yunani is also there and no, Ayurveda Ayush is, is, is a brilliant holistic. move. It's, it's a brilliant move. See, uh, with, with the global f figures of healthcare, the way it is going, with, with a CAGR of 10.8 in, in the next like, like 10 to 12 years, if you have to get a share of that, the brands like ours, like Bedanath, are going to make their move and going to get a larger chunk of that pie. But till the government support is not there. See, the moment we talk about the international market and the in, like, like the international consumer, you need government support. And believe me, this government is dedicated. They are very clear that this is the, the wealth of the country and this must go out. And we should be able to handle much higher exports than what we are doing today. And Ayush ministry is the front. For, for doing this job. I think it's a, it's a great initiative. And, and any, they have made a lot of it. Without Googling, can you tell me who's the Ayush minister? You don't know. Last, the first one was Sripada Yashu Nayak from Goa. I met him in a flight. Very humble, uh, nice gentleman. And now is the former chief minister of Assam, um, uh, Sobo Nanda Khonwal. I mean, trying to pronounce it. So, anyway. Your question, sir. Last question. Actually, I am going to supplement oh, what. Yes, but I keep it short. Give him the mic. Yeah. You still need the mic. Yeah, thank you. Three companies I worked with, and they didn't follow both of your principles. <laughs> One is uh, Amrit Varanaspati, second generation, folded up. They didn't want to grow, they didn't want to professionalize. Second is quality ice cream, second generation. We should get you to write a column for us. Didn't succeed. On the other hand, Dabar, it's very successful. So and one you said Amrit Banaspati. Amrit Banaspati. Unka ek aata tha, chips aate the. Uncle Chips, Uncle very Uncle successful. Chips. I launched Bole that. Mere lips, I launched uh, Uncle I Chips. I launched that brand. Radio well. advertising. My yeah, friend I, created it. Yeah, Sunil I launched, created that. Correct, I launched, the, launched that brand. Sunil Kumar created that. Yeah, I launched that brand. Achha, then, so uh, you remember Sunil Kumar? Yeah, yeah. Sunil, yeah. jisne radio jingle. Right. Sunil, correct. he was with FCB Ulka. That's then. true, that's true. And, uh, so second, Leo, so second you said is was quality. Leo, third, concept brand uh, Third is Dabar, who've done all the right things that you've been talking about, and they are successful. Professionalization, not giving it to the elder son, giving it to the professional, Absolutely. sending it out, sending a, the son abroad, the younger son abroad who's handling the business today. That's what Good. I to so he's saying you have to professionalize. Thank it. you. And legacy, you know, at the end of the day, Badenath has a richer legacy and a brand. I don't think to any Indian. You have to tell what Badenath is, you know, really uh, across the country and especially in the Hindi heartland. So please wish Mr. Ajay Sharma and Badenath uh, uh, good luck because Thank as they Agra. grow, please. it also Thank means you, the immunity will grow. Mr. Harbinder Narula, who is the CEO of our BW Wellbeing World and BW Healthcare World is applauding. So clearly he agrees with you. That's a plug for you, Harbinder. So uh, all the best. Please give Mr. Sharma a big round of applause. He's made time. Bigger round. Thank you.